Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining sleepapnea.org for our weekly speaker series. We are happy uh, this week to present on the topic of UARS, Upper Airway Resistance Syndrome. And I'm happy to have with us uh, two physicians, Dr. Shannon Sullivan, who is a sleep specialist at Stanford University in California, and Dr. Casey Lee, who is a sleep specialist and surgeon in Palo Alto. Well, thank you very much, Justine, for um, inviting us uh, together to talk about this. UARS stands for Upper Airway Resistance Syndrome. Um, and your question about is it different than obstructive sleep apnea or OSA uh, is very relevant. I think as a field, there are different perspectives on that. But let's go back to the start. Um, UARS was first described in 1993. Um, and essentially, it shares some of the same underlying factors as obstructive sleep apnea. So let's start with obstructive sleep apnea. That's a condition where breathing is interrupted during sleep. Um, and the nature of those interruptions are classified as either apneas, which are stop breathing events, or hypopneas, which are breathing events where the amplitude of airflow is sufficiently reduced um, uh, to meet criteria. And either one wakes up out of sleep or has an arousal, I should say, out of sleep or an oxygen desaturation. UARS um, is a little bit different. Uh, once again, there is uh, there are breathing abnormalities, but they are but these breathing abnormalities are unique. Um, they are not the same as apneas and hypopneas. And in fact, one of the criteria for UARS is that these events do not meet criteria for hypopneas or apneas. So they're fun, these uh, underlying constituent events are, are fundamentally different. Uh, well, what are they? These uh, same underlying sort of risk factor, there's increased resistance in the upper airway. But in this case, um, the, the events are, are uh, um, paired with increased respiratory um, effort and arousals out of sleep. Um, and what's really unique about upper airway resistant events, which are called respiratory uh, arreras or re respiratory effort related arousals, is that they are marked by considerable flow limitations. So these events are recognizable on overnight sleep studies, but you have to be looking at the uh, nasal uh, uh, signal to be able to see uh, these events. Now, taking kind of bundling that together, what actually is occurring is that an individual is having very fragmented sleep. And many of the symptoms of upper airway resistance syndrome are related to, we believe are related to that sleep fragmentation. So let's talk with Dr. Lee about um, treating UARS a little bit. Um, you know, as I said before for myself, uh, whether I actually have it or not, <laughs> um, I, I chose to uh, use CPAP therapy. My, my husband was using it. My daughter was using it. So it was very familiar to me. You know, other people, it's a, it's, it might be a little bit more intimidating or daunting. But what, what, what are some of the treatments that are out there to help people that have this uh, 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 airway resistance? In, in summary, I think that... Uh you want to really focus on improvement of nasal airway, whether it's uh, nasal surgery alone or expansion of the nasal cavity with uh, maxillary expansion. None of these surgeries are very invasive. Uh, they're usually outpatient surgeries, and they can be quite, uh, quite helpful in the uh, URS patients. What about, so if you think that you eventually get OSA, is it a precursor to, you know, having that develop later on? I mean, as we... <laughs> As we all age, everything seems to become looser, less firm, less. <laughs> and so do you just eventually roll into that or is it too not necessarily combined? My two cents, I don't think we know, but my two cents on that is both. Um, there are some folks who have UARS that will over time for women, perhaps at menopause or for either men or women with substantial weight gain, um, go on to develop classical OSA, um, but not everybody does. Um, and so I think, you know, we, we take every patient at one patient at a time and try to do the best we can to treat, um, to treat their particular sleep disorder breathing and, and knowing that um, we need to follow them over time. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yes, I absolutely agree with Shannon in that, you know, years back, people would say, well, it's a continuum of UARS and gradually progress with sleep into sleep apnea. I, I don't think that's really the case. I think there are, there's some uh, a subgroup of patients that may do that, as what mentioned, uh, as uh, what Shannon mentioned. But I think that uh, it, it really is quite different. Again, it, it, it's going to go into some uh, more of a neurologic uh, type of factors. But um, I, I don't I don't think that every patient with UARS is going to ultimately develop sleep apnea. I want, to, I want to thank both of you so much. You have helped our community over the years by participating in some of our uh, patient summits that we've had and you know, doing some other videos previously for us. I want to thank both of you very much for, for joining us again and getting this information out to our sleep apnea community so we can you know, help as many people um, you know, uh, improve their lives and, and, and feel good through, throughout the day. So I want to thank you so much for joining us. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. Check us out at sleepapnea.org. Thank you. Thank you.